Okay, so the first uh, minute or two of this video is going to be a slideshow with some pictures of when I was making the uh, Lazy Weekend Canoe. And uh, this first picture is when I had cut out the sides uh, on the side pieces, glued them together, which I'll show you in another picture, and then connected them to the stems. The stem is the piece of wood at the... Uh, end there so that was early on in the process i really wanted to take a lot more pictures but uh kind of got carried away with what i was doing and didn't take the pictures the other thing about the canoe is originally it was i think going to be uh, 16 feet after i started to put it together i looked at it and said uh this is going to be pretty big i'm not going to be able to handle putting it on and off the car by myself so i cut it down to 14 feet which was pretty easy all i did was just cut a uh a foot off of each end and here you could see uh, the butt block this is where you have two pieces of plywood actually the next picture will show you a little bit better of the the butt block so this is what I was starting to say is this is the butt block you have two pieces of plywood they're connected right down the center uh, very straight cut down the center and then you have uh, a lot of glue PL premium glue is on the other uh, in between these two that are sandwiched together you put some weights on there and by the next day you have a very very uh, tight bond uh, no worries about it uh, breaking when it flexes um, it's the PL premium works great so this is the stem this is the two sides of the, the canoe glued together and I used a lot of glue to make sure I had a very tight bond. You could see the glue that was squeezed uh, squeezed out when I um, did the screwing on the outside. I'll show you that. So here you can see this is the stem. We just saw the inside. And then I screwed every uh, couple of inches all the way down. And... Um, that's all I needed to do as far as sealing it. The PL Premium and uh, tightly screwing it really did the job there. So here's uh, the boat, the canoe, when um, I had it uh, started. It was pretty much assembled. This is where a lot of the real work comes. Getting to this point you can get to fairly quickly, like a day or two. Uh, not including the drying time for the glue. It's all of the finish work that really chews up a lot of your time. So uh, just be ready for that. You can have a canoe to this point in, a, in no time. It's the finish work that's going to take you some time. So here's the, uh, after I put the first coat of paint on. This is when not too long before it was done. Flipped over. Uh, just about ready to go. There's another angle. And that's the inside of it. So you can see it's got a lot of room on the inside. It's flat. Uh, gives you a little bit of uh, stability. Uh, but it, it is a canoe, so don't expect uh, to be able to stand all day in there. But you definitely can't stand for uh, short periods. It, it, it is a little bit wobbly. Not like a boat, but it will uh, support you. And then uh, here I am, first day out on the lake uh, in uh, early April, uh, maybe mid-April. First time taking it out. So now let's go to the video portion of this and I'll show you uh, all the things I did. So here's the canoe as it sits today. Uh, let me go over some of the details on it. Um, I added on quite a few things since I initially made it. But I'll go over the basics of uh, when it was made. Um, in here you can see right there on the side that piece of uh, wood. And one on this side are the scarf joints. And that is where the um, quarter inch plywood was glued together with uh, PL Premium. And... Uh, what I did is I tried to use as much of the wood as I could without ma and then making as few of those scarf joints as I could. So, and then in the bottom, I used a uh, as much of a whole piece of uh, four by eight 
quarter inch plywood and um, had to make a scarf joint not too far from the end. Uh, from the outside, um, I did not really um, do a lot of finish work on this. If I was going to be selling it, it would uh, do a lot better finish work. But this is really just for me. Uh, it's for utilitarian purposes, just to get out there and fish. Um, here's the bottom. You could see a little bit of a uh, uh, the line. Um, some of the other scarf joints for the top uh, rub rail. Uh, here's a scarf joint. And scarf joints are nothing more than taking two pieces of uh, wood and uh, making them into one larger piece. So I did that. Um, the bottom pieces are whole uh, pieces that I picked up. These were just stuff I had laying around for the top. The bottom I went out and picked up uh, long pieces. And uh, in hindsight, that was a mistake because these are uh, finger jointed pieces on the bottom. And I'll show you what happened on this side. Um, as I was putting it together, uh, this side snapped on me. It uh, broke. It didn't snap completely, but it broke. It failed at the finger joint. So um, I was lazy, and rather than uh, taking it off and putting a new one on, which I really wish I did, I uh, patched it. And you can see down here, um, that's my patch job. But uh, it really has held together. No, no issues there. Um, so some of the things that I've added on to this since I initially made it uh, is I added on uh, cup holders on either on uh, here and then whoop that was just moving that's one in the back that's where I normally sit this is uh, one in the front I haven't been out with anybody else yet uh, so um, how to get it when I got the uh, motor which I'll show you the uh, um, trolling motor. I had to register the boat, so I uh, had to have a little plate made up. Got that on eBay. Uh, with some of the other things I added is I added a cleat on the front, um, a nylon cleat, and another one on the back. I also added, uh, just recently, added a, uh, a support for the trolling motor. Originally, I was putting the trolling motor right up against the side of the boat, and um, it was okay, but it had trouble turning. It was hitting my, uh, my chair that I put in, uh, so uh, I moved it out, and I'm able to make the turns much wider, or tighter, actually. So uh, some of the other things I did is I put on these connectors, these bolts on either end of the boat, so that way when it's tied to the car or the van, um, I can uh, hook it up with the um, ratchet ties and uh, tie it securely. As you can see, uh, my drilling was way off. I don't know what the hell I was on that day, but the drilling is way off, so it really looks amateurish. Um, one of the other things I did is I added the uh, bottom, the uh, a little bit more of a uh, stern, uh, not a stern, a little bit more of a uh, keel because it wasn't turning well. So let me flip the boat over and I'll show you that. So if you look here, this is the initial or the original uh, keel that I ran all the way across. It's got a butt joint. Uh, I think right here uh, and I screwed that from the inside out and uh, used PL premium for all of my gluing on this boat uh, and then I used caulk on all of this the seams uh, the water seams just as an extra layer of protection and uh, it has worked with no uh, leaks but anyway, uh, it wasn't turning that well in the water. Um, and I think that was because the keel was uh, too flat. So what I did is I got a two by four and you can see it starts right here and goes to the end. And I did the same thing on this end. 
And I, all I did is I just made it so that it is the same, uh, the same height all the way across. So uh, it, I took it out a couple weeks ago. It handles better. Still not as uh, good as I'd like, but uh, it, it definitely handles all right. In the high wind, you're going to have problems. It's a flat bottom. Uh, with all flat bottoms, they uh, don't turn on a dime, and uh, they, uh, the wind does definitely affect it. So, um, some of the problems with a homemade boat made out of wood uh, is, uh, even this is, um, let, me, let me get the paint. I'll show you the paint that I used. All right, so for the uh, main body of the boat, I used a Rust-Oleum uh, Hunter Green. It's an oil-based paint. The reason I used oil base is because oil-based paints dry harder. Uh, it's got a more durable finish. Um, for the uh, keel, I used a uh, latex uh, paint and um, just for a different color contrast. So the problems with using paint on plywood, and there's no glass on this, no fiberglass at all. Um, the, the, the problem is, and it's really not that bad of a problem, is you, uh, when you rub up on the bottom, like when you're taking the boat or in or out of the water, you get some wear and tear. Uh, it takes two minutes to touch it up and it's back to where it was. The thing is, is this boat is sitting uh, all the time upside down like this uh, behind my house, partly covered. So I'm not worried about, really worried about it breaking down or uh, the water really affecting it because it's, uh, it, it, it would take years and it's not in the water all the time. As soon as it comes out, I mean, as soon as I'm done fishing, uh, it's probably been in the water. I've been out three times and going out again tomorrow. It's probably been in the water uh, maybe five hours total, six hours. Um, so uh, it, it's done pretty well. Uh, I started out this project uh, just, you know, so that I can uh, have something to do over the winter. And I decided I wanted to make a boat. So I started out with the canoe and my, uh, hopefully my next project is, is to make a, uh, at least a 16 foot, um, I'm looking at making a Brockway uh, skiff. Uh, if you look it up on uh, the web, there's plenty of uh, information about the Brockway. Plans are freely available. Um, anyway, uh, so that's what I'm thinking of uh, doing next. But this was easy. Uh, the thing is, is it's it sort of became a challenge. Uh, I started out with um, making this uh, just to, for fun and with scrap that I had around the house. I had to buy a few sheets of uh, wood. I had to buy some uh, uh, paint, but uh, it, it ended up being a uh, cheap project, and now it's kind of an obsession to see what I could do to it uh, while it's and and not cost me a whole lot of money. So uh, I'm going to show you some of the cheap upgrades I've done to it, or uh, downgrades, if you might even want to say that I've uh, done to it and uh, how it works. So. Uh, here's a uh, little fish upside down. It's upside down, but the fish that I put on. So let me flip it and uh, show you some of the equipment I use with it. So one thing I did not mention, uh, that the way this is right now with uh, putting the uh, bigger keel on and uh, the trolling motor mount, all these little things add up. So it's up to 73 pounds, which really isn't too bad but it does get a little bit um, harder to handle. Uh, you know, the bigger, the heavier it gets, the, the more problem it is lifting it onto the top of a van. So uh, I'm going to uh, make an attempt at seeing if I can mount it on a uh, Hyundai Sonata, which really shouldn't be an issue. So we'll see. Anyway, uh, so some of uh, the equipment I use with it. So um, here is the trolling motor. It is a Minn Kota uh, Andorra C2 30 pound thrust. Um, this cost me $14. Uh, I had some Cabela's Club Visa points that I used along with a uh, gift certificate I got from work for a little bit of a reward. 
And uh, so this cost me $14. I think um, if you had to buy it, it would be a little over $100. Uh, this is a Garmin Striker 4 uh, fish finder that I just got. Uh, also with uh, Cabela Club Visa points. And um, uh, another gift certificate that I got from work, a little bit of an award. And um, so I'm really looking forward to trying that because I've been going out blind on lakes I've never been out before and uh, just fishing and I have not been doing well so far. So I mounted the transducer on the bottom of the, um, the motor and uh, looking forward to trying it out. So some of the other things I, I mentioned, um, like I said, it, it's sort of become a, uh, a, a contest or a... Um, a drive now to do things as cheaply as possible even though I can go out and buy these things but uh, it, it, I, I just kind of like tinkering and seeing what I could do so uh, this cart I made uh, these are two Harbor Freight tires uh, mounted on a uh, long steel bar I picked up at uh, Home Depot these tires I got with the coupon uh, are uh, were like uh, 3 dollars and what you can do is you can mount, what I, what I uh, can do is if I wanted to, I could put, rest the canoe on that and use some straps. And if I'm at a place where I need to be able to wheel it down to the water, um, I could put it on one end, lift the other end and uh, wheel it all the way down to the water. Um, that is uh, just, you know, something I could do. And then when... Um, I usually put all of my stuff in there, the life jacket, uh, the battery, and um, I put that in here, and then I mount it, or just bungee it, right to this, so that uh, it sits up straight. I put my tackle box, all that in there. Um, I put a, uh, a, a tape measure, or a, 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 a ruler on there. This was left over from my... Um, table saw over there that uh, I used to make a lot of the cuts for this so uh, I put that on here uh, unfortunately I haven't had a chance to use it yet so uh, let me show you my custom chair so try not to laugh too much but here is my custom chair uh, it's an old beach chair um, and uh, I did not want to put regular seats in here, the regular canoe seats. I want it to be uh, out on the water from fishing. I want to be comfortable. So uh, I put this on. Um, I, again, uh, kind of a challenge to uh, see if how cheaply I could do this, but it looks like crap. Uh, I put on uh, dollar store pool noodles on the bottom, just taped them. And uh, that was the reason I had to put on the trolling motor mount was uh, it was mounted right on the side here and when I tried to make uh, turns I would hit the side and it would I would either have to make a turn the other way or uh, it would be a slow turn so I mounted it on the back the um, controls for the trolling motor do um, extend out so uh, it definitely makes it easier let me so it does extend out um, and uh, definitely helps. So uh, that is it. I'm probably going to buy a shorter seat because um, it, it's still, uh, I have to lean back. A lot of times when I'm casting, I'll uh, hit my arm on here. So I want to get uh, my arm up on here. So I want to get a uh, seat with a shorter back. And I'll probably pick up a couple of them, one to put in the front for... Uh, my wife if she wants to come out with me or any of my friends so that's pretty much it so uh all built with a uh, quarter inch regular plywood uh glued and screwed uh for the glue i used the uh, pl premium um stuff worked great pick it up at lowe's or home depot uh it really holds well uh here let's see i'll It's uh, very uh, good, very inexpensive. Picked up a lot of uh, tips from some of the boat building sites. Some people uh, are very big on using epoxy. Um, other people said um, to use PL Premium. Since this is not going to be in the water, uh, sitting in the water all the time, I decided to use the PL Premium. 
worked fine. Um, so you could see all of the uh, screws that went into uh, connecting the rub rails. Uh, there's screws on the bottom connecting in. I filled most of those in, but uh, screws run through uh, the boat into the outside and um, I grinded those off. Uh, let me show you the, uh, the, the lifesaver for uh, when I made this as far as grinding and finishing. All right, so this definitely made life much easier. This is a cheap Harbor Freight uh, angle grinder that I uh, got with the coupon. Probably cost me under $15. I have a sanding um, wheel on there right now, but I picked up a bunch of other wheels, cut off wheels. Uh, when I was uh, gluing the rub rails and uh, the rub rails and the chine logs, uh, screwing those on, uh, the screws were a little bit too long and uh, they would stick out of the side. You can't really see any of them because I used the angle grinder to grind them off. Uh, Save me hours worth of work. Also with the um, sandpaper attachment, I rounded over the bottoms. So uh, you have the bottom where the bottom of the plywood meets the chine log here. Um, I rounded those over too so you don't have a sharp edge uh, to catch on anything and splinter. So uh, that definitely saved me a lot of time. So uh, that's all for now. More later.